Welcome back. In this next set of video tutorials, we're going to be talking about working with the Type Tool inside of Photoshop. Now, the Type Tool affords you all kind of possibilities inside of the Photoshop environment, and there's many different things that you can do with it. As you probably already know, Type is a clear and very important element to any design work that you're going to be doing. For the most part, though, you'll probably be reserving your type work to any screen-based output. If you're working with print and, for example, if you're laying out a whole novel of information, then you're more than likely going to be working with other Adobe applications like, for example, InDesign, or you might be doing some sophisticated work in something like Illustrator. However, that doesn't mean that the type tool inside of Photoshop is something that you couldn't use for just about any different project, and it's something that you would be able to do for any number of different ideas. So what I want to be bringing to your attention here is how the type tool can help you out inside of any of the work that you're choosing to do in Photoshop. And we can start that by just going to the file menu and choosing a new document. And again, for the purposes of this recording, I'm at a 1024 resolution, so I'm just going to choose a web preset of 800 by 600 here. You certainly could choose something that's a lot larger than that if you wish. Up to this point, though, it's suited me just fine. So here is the type tool. It's the last inside of the vector-based shapes, as you can see here, the shape drawing tools. And that's because the type tool is something that is working with a vector-based scenario. Now, I'm going to just go back to my original type, as you can see here. Clicking on the options up at the type here, up at the top, excuse me, of the type tool allows you to do a number of things. You can click on this area here and you can choose from any different type of font that you might have installed on your system, just as I can choose one here. And for example, let's choose Adobe Caslin Pro. And here you can choose from regular, italic, semi bold, whatever you have available for that particular font. You also have the ability of increasing the size or decreasing the size by choosing something from this little picker down here. Or, as you can see, whenever you put your mouse on top of somebody, something and you get the left and right arrows, you can slide to increase the size of your particular font. We're going to get into what this sharp thing does here, and it's really just for setting the anti-alias method of your particular block of text. Here you have three very simple and standard options which are the left alignment, center alignment, and the right alignment. Here's where you can get a color and just clicking on it will allow you to choose black, red, whatever color you want. Notice there is this little deselected element right here. It's sort of grayed out because we can't choose it until we actually have some type on the stage we won't be able to choose it, but when we do have some type, we'll be able to warp our text, as I'll be showing you how to do. And this little option here toggles the character and paragraph panels. If I click on it, you'll notice that here are my character and paragraph panels. The shortcut for this panel is Command-T or Control-T on your PC and Mac. So if you just come in here, you should be able to get that. So, nevertheless, if you're having any kind of difficulties, you can always come back up here or go to the window menu and you'll be able to see character. And these characters can then be dragged into your elements down here. As you can see, that's the icon for the character and this one for the paragraph. And they're easily accessible just through this option right here. So, let's just go through some of the basics of working with this. First and foremost, if you are setting up your type inside of a document. What you can do is create one of two different types of typography. One is called a point type, which basically allows you to type something out. And if you click here, you'll notice I'm just going to click and let go. Now, depending on the size that you've chosen, and here, look, I'll just take 36, for example, it will have a blinking cursor. This cursor then allows you to write out some type. So I'll just type something out. 
And you'll notice here in Adobe Caslin Pro, I've got the phrase, type something here. Now you'll notice you've got your blinking, flashing element working right there. If I wanted this to wrap, for example, like have something underneath this, well notice, just by typing along, there is no word wrap here. And that's because we just created some simple point type. So if you want to have something that is going to be wrapping around, I'll show you a different way of doing that in the next video tutorial. But in the meantime, if you're just creating point type as I did, click and let go, what you end up with is something that looks like this. And if you wanted to have something on another line, you would have to actually hit the return key to do that. But there's easier ways of putting things on different lines and separating them in that sense. We'll get to that in the next video as well. Now, here we are. What if I wanted to type a different line of type. So notice I still have my cursor blinking inside here. If I select type I would have to click and drag to select all of this type right here. However, if I want to exit this type there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can just click on the black arrow tool which allows you to select that type and move it around and then you would have to go to the type tool again and start clicking something over here. Now I'm going to go around that and show you another way. I'll just delete this one. If I want to select this type, you could just click on it, but if you double click on it, well nothing's really going to happen. You still have to go to the type tool, which is T, your type tool shortcut. And here we are blinking inside of this specific area. Well, if I wanted to exit this, Here's a great shortcut. You can press the command key. I'll actually just get rid of that. So here we are inside the type. And as I mentioned, if I wanted to exit this type, this line of type, and then start typing on another line, completely separate, independent, press the return key and that will still be inside of the same block. But if you press command return, that now allows me to, as you can see, I've got the type tool here, to click and create a separate line of text. If I want to scale that separate line of text, I would never use the free transform tool to do that. In order to select something, you select the entire element and then you would change its size just by sliding in something over here. As you can see, now I've got a separate line of text and type something on here is independent of that separate line of text. If I wanted to affect what's happening in this particular element, well then we can scale it up or down depending on what we want to be doing with this. So now I have two different types. And if you look at your layer palette, let's take a look at what we've created. You've got type something here on one layer and separate line of text on another layer. So that just shows you that whenever you start with the type tool and you start typing out something new, what ends up happening is it'll create a new layer. Notice, before I exit this, it just says layer one. But as soon as I exit this, you can press command return to do that. Then the name of whatever's written in here will be named for your particular layer. I don't want that, it's just junk. So there you go, and it shows you how you can work with something along those lines. Come back in the next video and I'll show you even more of what you can do with the type tool.